So I want to begin to look at a passage this morning from, say, from Joshua and draw out really some parallels with our own situation and um, where we are as a church. And then what we're going to do at the end of that, uh, I'm not going to spend too much time in the passage itself, but after, once we've pulled out some of these principles, I want us to go into some groups and just pray for um, a short time together and to really kind of, as we pick out the things that God is saying from his word and say, right, let's, let's give these back to God in prayer and say, great, God, will you, will you do that? So let's have a look at Joshua chapter five. We're going to start at verse 13 and um, it's going to come up on the screen as well. Here we go. When Joshua was near the town of Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a sword in hand. Joshua uh, went up to him and demanded, are you a friend or foe? Neither one, he replied. I am the commander of the Lord's army. At this, Joshua fell with his face to the ground in reverence. I am at your command, Joshua said. What do you want your servant to do? The commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did as he was told. Now, the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No one was allowed to go in or out. But the Lord said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho, its king and all its strong warriors. You and your fighting men should march around the army march around the town once a day for six days. Seven priests will walk ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. On the seventh day, you are to march around the town seven times with the priests blowing the horns. When you hear the priests give one long blast on the ram's horns, have all the people shout as loud as they can, then the walls of the town will collapse and the people can, ch uh, can charge straight into the town. So Joshua called together the priests and said, take up the ark of the Lord's covenant and assign seven priests to walk in front of it, each carrying a ram's horn. Then he gave orders to the people, march around the town and the armed men will lead the way in front of the ark of the Lord. OK, so you might be quite familiar with that story. Um, it's certainly very popular in Sunday schools um, with the kids and things like that. It's an incredible story, really, um, of, uh, you, you know, of a real of God really moving um, it, with his people, working with his people as they're sort of going they're in the promised land and they're looking to take the land that God has given to them. And so they're headed towards this city, Jericho, and um, Jericho is a seemingly impregnable fortress as we're told it's locked up tight uh, no one can come in no one can go out but just before that the bit we read at the beginning we, Joshua has this amazing encounter with this this strange this strange figure this person who's described as you know the commander of the Lord's army who is this person who is this thing it, maybe it's some sort of archangel i don't know many people many people believe that this is actually an old testament appearance of jesus there's many people because joshua bows down and worships him and um uh, well whoever it was joshua clearly encounters god before he goes to take jericho and i think that's really really important um, this idea of of in, the encountering God before we do things, uh, before we move forward into the things that God wants us. Because even the taking of ground, even the things that God may be giving his people to take, doesn't mean that the taking of things will be easy or straightforward. There may well be battles to fight. And, uh, and therefore there's a need to come out, to, to go into those things off the back of an encounter with God. And I think as we seek to cut, you know, to sort of unlock church life, as we seek to sort of say, well, what is Grace Church Tame going to be going forward? Then let's do that out of an encounter with God. 
And that was why it was just an encouragement, even in a simple, small way this morning, that our focus became this morning about encountering God as we were worshipping, wasn't it? Um, we want that whenever we gather together. And one of the biggest temptations that I think we face as we look to unlock church life will be just to default back to how things were before. And just, I don't know about you, but whenever, like, for example, it's in a simple way of understanding it. If you ever turn on, if you use a word processor, like Word or something like that, when I turn that on, when I, when I click the app and it comes up, it defaults to the same font and the same size every time I switch it on. If I want something else, I've got to change it. Um, if I don't, it will default. And I think the danger for us is that we just default when we try and switch back on church life. We just default back to what we were before and diary fills up. And we, we, you know, we're suddenly all the restrictions are relaxed and we fill our diaries up with all the things we want to do that we haven't been able to do for over a year, not just in the church, but in our lives as well. And and before long, life will be the same and we will have no time again and no energy uh, or space to actually really think, is this really what God wanted for us? Um, and 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 this this enforced time that we've been in may have been um you know a wasted time because we haven't used it wisely we haven't sat and thought actually the things that have gone what do i want to bring back and what am i going to leave as gone those things were for, were in the past and so i don't want us to fall into that temptation as god's people you know sunday mornings the same life the same but what if instead we say actually we're going to give ourselves to encountering god and then moving forward out of that encounter that we seek God and move out. That wouldn't it be amazing if any everything we did, all our church movements came out of that place of encounter first. So we've got an encounter of God behind us. And of course, what's behind us the, is really important. But actually, as we saw from the story, what's in front of us is also important. Because it wasn't just that they had this encounter behind them and then they, in, they, then they encountered Jericho in front of them. Actually, something else was happening there in the story. I don't know if you noticed that. As the Israelites go up to take Jericho, they take the ark and they put that up front. Now, the ark, it's not Noah's ark. OK, there are two arks kind of, no, you know, kind of well-known arks in the Bible. There's Noah's ark. I think they'd have had trouble carrying that along in front of them, this great big boat. But actually, the Ark is the Ark of the Covenant, if you like. It's a box, a very decorative box. But this box was carried around by God's people, and it symbolically represented God's throne and his presence among his people. Yeah. And it's interesting that even that, some of the times that we've encountered God it, recently, there's been this coming through, this sense of, taking the presence of God with us and keeping the presence of God in front of us. And that's what's going on here in, uh, in, in this passage. Joshua wanted the ark up front, the presence of God going ahead of the people as they move forward out of an encounter with God, but they move forward into the things that God is giving them. And so as we move into this new season, there are going to be many things ahead of us. Not all of them will be great things. Some of them will be things that will need unlocking, a bit like Jericho. You know, they might be thinking, is there a way in here? Can we get in? There are things that God is saying, I want you to take for, for the gospel. And it might think we might look at it and think, well, that's shut up tight. But God's saying, actually, if you move out of an encounter and you have my presence in front of you, then we're, you know, we're, we're in a good place. And I know we say, we say this a lot, but it's come through time and time again as we've prayed through these last few months. The presence of God is key. It must go before us. It must be up front in all we do. We want to be led by the presence of God and we want to be pushed out from an encounter of God. We want those who see us coming, those who see us coming 
to see the presence of God. Can you imagine the people on Jericho? I don't know what, you know, the walls, maybe they're standing on top of the walls. Maybe they're, I don't know, turrets like a castle or something like that. They're looking down and they can see these people coming towards them. Now that, that might, they might've looked at it and thought, that's all right, we're shut up tight. But then what do they see right at the front? They see the Ark of the Covenant. They see the, the you know, this representation of God, the throne of God and his presence. And they think, oh my goodness, we've heard about this. You know, the presence of God is coming. And when the presence of God is present among his people, amazing stuff happens. So there was this encounter with God behind them and the presence of God going ahead of them. And as we go forward into the things that we believe God lays, is going to be laying on our hearts and is laying on our hearts, then as we look more for, forward to, to move, as we look to move forward into the things that God has given us, important, so important that we know that we've got encounters of God behind us and the presence of God going with us. And so it's time to kind of move forward together. Joshua gets his instructions from God. I think it's interesting, I, even as I was reading it, I'd not put this in my notes, but there's that bit where God, Joshua says, are you for us or against us? Did you notice that bit? He goes up to him and says, who are you for? And he says, neither. You know, I'm not for you. I'm not against you. Now, there's a temptation to listen to that and think, oh, that's not very encouraging. God's not on our side. And I, and I was thinking about that and think, as we were reading it through. I was thinking, you know, what God wants to know is, are we on his side? Are we on his side? It's not a question of whether God's on our side or not. It's are we on his side? Who are we for? Are we for him or are we against him? OK, if we're against him, then we'll do what he says. We'll do what he says, won't we? And so Joshua gets his instructions from God and he has to choose. Am I with God or am I not? And so he turns to the people and he says, go forward, move forward. OK, and the, and it's a kind of that you've got this kind of weird situation where they kind of march around the city lots of times, don't they? Uh, and, uh, you know, and so the moving forward, it can kind of feel like they're you know, going round and round in circles even for a while and not not much happening. But what they're doing is obeying. They're for God. They're doing what God is calling them to do. But you can imagine some of the things that might have been going through their minds once they they get this call from Joshua. Let's go. Let's move forward. First thing, I think there must be there may have been apprehension. You know, since I don't know about you, but, I, you know, as we're thinking about unlocking church life, coming out of this national lockdown, maybe you feel a sense of apprehension. What's it going to be like? It, are things going to feel strange? Is it going to be difficult? You know, what's is this all? How is this all going to work out? Maybe you're looking at the church and you're thinking, you know, Things don't quite seem how are, you know, they're different. Things have changed. How is it all going to work out? And as we look to our future, those key questions we have to ask ourselves are things like, OK, well, what needs to change to get us from where we are now to where we want to be? What needs to change? And as we do this, we will have no doubt some big questions to make. Uh, big, big decisions to make, which could cause us to feel that sense of apprehension. You know, things like, how will we do church as we come out of this? If we're not just going to go back to how things were, how will we do, do the do church? Will, what will everybody come back? You know, where, are we going to have the same people in the room as we're in when we when we left? And there will inevitably be steps of faith that will, will be required that could leave us wondering how, what, how, where are we going to be in the future? So there may be a sense of apprehension. Now, it might that apprehension could go further. You might find, actually, there's even anxiety about that. You might feel anxious. You know, can you imagine the soldiers as they're heading towards um, Jericho feeling very anxious about what lay ahead? There was a genuine danger in what they were doing. Jericho was shut up tight. They were trusting God, but would some of them lose their lives? Would their friends, those standing next to them, would they put, get through? Would they still be there tomorrow? There are definitely challenges and changes ahead. And some of us may be fearful of what those changes will look like 
and how they may affect us in the future. Maybe you're anxious about that. Maybe you're looking around and thinking, this is not making, I'm feeling anxious about this. But then, of course, there will be some, and I'm sure there's some even here, your feelings are actually more like excitement. You're feeling excited. Strangely enough, I think as Israel kind of approached Jericho, there would have been excitement about what lay ahead. Many of them would have been, you know, would, would have trained for moments just like this. And this is an opportunity to see if all that hard work and training was going to pay off. And so that creates a sense of excitement, doesn't it? And maybe you feel a sense of excitement about the church. Maybe you're thinking, actually, all these things, all, all this sort of sense of unsettledness, all the challenges and the changes, actually, I'm not, I, you know, I'm not scared of that. I'm really excited about that. And so perhaps, or maybe there's just a mixture of motions and it's all swirling around inside. I have to say, I've gone through all of those emotions. Um, there, a big part of me in this moment has a sense of excitement. You know, I, I'm apprehensive in a sense of I don't know what God wants, exactly what God is going to do. But he said enough for me to be excited, to think, yeah, God has got us. He's got this. The church is God's business. It's not my business. It's not your business. The church is God's business. And uh, he's dealing with us and he knows what he's doing. He just wants us to decide, who, are we for him or against him? And so allow yourself to get excited, even amongst the sense of uncertainty and what's going to happen. Allow yourself to get excited in God yeah, and about what the future will hold. So let's just spend, spend a few moments maybe just thinking through Maybe some of the things you can, we can expect to see as we go forward, as we move forward in, together in the, in the next few, few sort of weeks and months. What I want to say is this, and it won't come as any real surprise to you, is we're going to continue to meet together. And we're going to, you know, we're going to value meeting together on a Sunday during the week. And that focus, the main focus is going to continue to be encounter, encountering the presence of God through worship, through teaching, through ministry, Holy Spirit ministry, whether that's in person or online or some kind of hybrid of both, we are going to make sure that meeting together in different ways and encountering the presence of God stays up front. So that is the main thing. Just like Joshua, we want to make absolutely sure that the presence of God goes before us in everything that we do. And we're going to continue to make it a priority to pray as well one of the great things that's come out of the, our time in lockdown has been the huge amount of prayer that's gone on and we want to make sure that we keep praying and that we don't kind of um you know relegate it to a kind of a side issue that we keep prayer up front and central um, we may not end up doing it the same ways that we've been doing it but we will continue to pray and to continue to give ourselves to that and we get you know we're going to continue to um you know, to do to, to to you know pray during the week as well you know, we want to do that don't we um these have been amazing times in god's presence and again we're seeing the fruit from those in you know those times in all areas of the church and the great thing isn't it is that even though we we're, we're like this we are still encountering god we are still encountering him we are you know, someone prayed again today. God's not confused, is he? You know, we are meeting with God in these times. OK, and, and we shouldn't be surprised by that, should we? There shouldn't be a sense of like surprise. You know, perhaps at the beginning there was like, oh, how is this going to work? I mean, you know, we kind of caught, you know, catch ourselves thinking this is going to be so difficult. But the reality is, is that God is not confused. He knows what he's doing. We can trust him. We've got used to it. It's OK. God's got us. It's hit the church. It's his business. He's building it. So there have been some amazing times in God's presence. I want to say also, we're going to, um, you know, we, we've our leadership structures, as you know, has changed, hasn't it? You know, we, we're in a different situation. I'm looking to start to gather some people together to start to talk about some of the 
the ways we're going to do church, the ways we want to go. Obviously, we're in discussions with talk with with um, the you know the apostolic team with Sean and um, Matt. We speak Matt Partridge and Ox. We speak to them regularly, weekly, and we're talking about the way forward and all those kinds of things. So do keep praying for that as well, uh, for encounter and the presence of God. Um, so so God has got us. God has got us. And, um, uh, you know, we're not saying that it's all going to be plain sailing from here on in, but God has got us and um, we, we need to just continue to trust him and to keep praying, keep seeking his, his face, hearing what he's saying to us. And so I want to finish, just kind of close now, just where I started really by saying, you know, I was, that where the story started, encountering God. You know, we're going to go into some small groups in a moment. Um, and I don't want us to talk about the passage today, um, you know, uh, in that sense. I want us to pray together. Can we pray together? And we're just going to go together for about 10 minutes. And um, I'd love us to pray. I'm going to try and put into the chat, hopefully. Just some things to pray for. Here we go. So let's pray for regular encounters with God that propel us forward into ministry. OK, let's not stand still. We want encounter behind us, presence of God with us and in front of us. So let's pray for that. Let's ask God to do that. And let's pray for that increased sense of God's presence when we gather together. Yeah. OK, let's not be afraid to ask God for a greater experience of his presence. Let's not be afraid of that. OK, sometimes we can can be fearful of, of saying, oh, we don't want to be emotional and all those kinds of things. You know, we want God as God's a relational God. He wants us to encounter him and experience his presence. So let's pray for that. Pray for one another in that. And let's pray for how church life unlocks so that it unlocks into a new and exciting season for the church. OK, and I'll just throw one more in, which I haven't uh, put in there. Maybe you can identify with your feelings. Maybe you're maybe they're, you're anxious. Maybe you're excited. Maybe. Um, you're apprehensive or maybe something else you might want to share that in your group and pray together about that 